The models I tend to choose for stock photography are models that look good with a good natural smile. That's, that's comes, that comes before everything else. It comes before beauty as well. One of the things that really makes a photographer stand out is his ability to direct and to make the models intervene in a way that is believable. A lot of what is the reason that I sell a lot of images is because my images look natural. They look believable. People believe the images. They say, I believe this situation. I believe that they're laughing. So we are going to go through a couple of tricks you can use to make it look like that. Because the problem is it has to look like they're really laughing, but it has to be razor sharp. Now, how do you do that? You two are couples. Okay. Get closer, arm around. You two are couples. You're going to be the background now, and I'm going to be focusing on you two. So we are using this couple as props, basically, for the set. So now what we have here is a classic single out. A single out shot is one where you have, you have a group and you put someone in front of that group and you shoot with some people in the background. That's a classic shot. So this is something we definitely have to shoot because it sells very well. What you get is you get a background that's much better than just being a white wall or something. You have people, you have an idea, you get character, you get a, an idea that these people are in a situation. Your stylist or whoever you have takes care of, of makeup and whatever, they have to be there when you're shooting. They have to be able to notice small things going wrong with the hair or the face. Otherwise, you're just going to get images rejected because of a hair going down through the eye. That's a rejection reason. Normally what you want is you want a generous smile. You want that real powerful, convincing smile. However, a smile only looks that way if it comes natural. That's the big problem. So what you do is you train that with the model. You train it over and over again, making sure that she can do that on command and she can freeze in the middle of it. All right, everybody try to give me a, uh, a good laugh. Kind of like you're laughing. When you're laughing, lean your head back. I want you to open your mouth a little bit and squint your eyes a little bit, okay? One, two, three, go. Very good, very good. These are good models, that's nice. Now we're getting unsharp images because the models are moving around. So what we, you need to do now is just go in there and control them a little bit. Okay, so you go in there and say, okay, do the natural laugh, but once you're laughing, just freeze it. And decide on a pose and just, we'll, we'll just take that pose, okay? So we'll do the laugh like ha ha and you'll just freeze it at, at that point and we'll just take the shot and we'll do it a couple of times and at some point we'll hit something that looks right, okay? Try again. Excellent, freeze. Completely razor sharp image, looking natural, looking like they're interacting. Can you see? That's what we want. That really makes the difference super sell or not sell at all. When setting up lighting and if you want to shoot isolates, it's very important that you burn the background. And that's a little contrary to what most people think. You have to reserve two lights for not being directed at the model, but being directed at the background and burning the background so it becomes completely white in the picture. Then you're actually, if you do that and you make that happen, then you're shooting perfect isolates that don't have to be isolated in any way in Photoshop and it just works. Studio lighting is all about control. The first thing you do is mark out on the floor where the model has to be. This is instructional because you would never have markers this big. What you would do is you probably take this off and you would take like this that you can retouch away. Just like that. A small tiny biny mic mark. And what you have to tell the model is that whatever she's doing on the set, her front tip of her toe, disregarding how she's standing, has to be right here. This is the first element of control. Now you have a place, you have a model, she's fixed, she's not going anywhere. You know that this is where you have to adjust the lighting to. So that's the first step. The next thing you do, we'll do a basic light setup with two lights. And it's gonna be the main light and the beauty disc. I need the main light pulled this way a little bit and a little down. Slightly down and forward. Your main light is your main light source that is the strongest light it's almost always coming from above. What it has to do is provide us with something we see, which is sun coming from above. So we like, our eyes like pictures that follow that pattern. We actually sometimes say it's bad lighting. Well, that's why. It's because that lighting is not following the pattern that we're evolutionarily equipped to see. So we have to follow that a little bit. And we do that by almost always having a main light equivalent to the sun. 
in some ways. Almost always get the lights as close to the model as you can. If you start shooting with lights that are far away from the model, you're taking away the effects of the softbox. You're basically making it smaller. So if you have huge softboxes and you're going and you're shooting because of comfort on large distances, you're getting a bad result. You have to get it as close to the model as possible. So what we do is we have the soft main light right here and we have the sharp light right here, which is the beauty disc. Can we get that down and get it about here? The beauty disc here serves the function of giving her a little more color. A picture with only diffused light and very little shadow is very colorless and it's not very sharp. So what we use this for is giving a little edge, a little poof that lights up the image and makes it razor sharp. It's the smallest details that will make this image good or bad. The way the light is positioned right now is perfect. It's slightly to the side, giving her a little edge. If you look at where the beauty disc is positioned, you want it just a little bit above her eyes. Instead of having it right here in front of her, that would give you a whole other image. But just above, and light comes down on her, spelling out the details of her face to the camera like this, pang, because you get that really shadow, that, that sharp shadow. This here is a basic light setup with two lights. This one has to be stronger than this one. The way I adjust that is by looking here in her eyes. Try to look forward. I can see from the reflection in her eyes how strong they are. And I can see that I have to turn this one up and that one down. They have to be about equivalent. But you got to remember that this is maybe five, six times as big as this one. So what does that mean? That means that this one has to be turned up a lot more than that one. But light is logarithmic. So that means a lot more. What do you want to do if you're shooting micro stock or if you're shooting for commercial jobs that has to uh, do cutouts is that you want to be able to cut her out, meaning that you have to have a perfectly white background. The way we do that is overexpose the background. So this setup here is very basic. Now we have four lights going. The back two lights burn the background out. That can't be too bright. It has to be about a stop brighter than the foreground, one stop. A lot of the raw files I produce are almost finished. They're, they're isolated completely. There is nothing to do in Photoshop if you do it right. But it needs, you need a little space. And you need good lights and you need a good studio. Thank you for taking part in this uh, workshop and uh, thank you for stopping by. Do visit my blog, it has all the newest tips and news on, on what's going on in Microstock. It also has a lot of introductional text and links that are very useful in Microstock. So uh, good luck, hope to see you in stock.